You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you to let's play episode of Changeling Tale: Jesse's Path. So the last last place we left off, uh, me and Bulgar are going out on the moor to hunt us a wolf, and we know that wolf is Jesse. So how in the world? How are we gonna get her out of this unscathed? I don't know, guys. Let's uh, let's see where this uh, where this uh, probably very eventful night will take us. All right, guys, let's get into it. <clears throat> Have to the accent in a little while. Got to get back into it. <clears throat> I felt Bulgaria and propped myself up against the rock. It's not the most comfortable conditions, but I'd slept through worse. Closing my eyes, I wait for sleep to overtake me. Oh, and check out Fatal Force if you can, new series I'm doing. Is that Jesse? Is that a pup? That is not a puppers. Malcolm. Malcolm, my boy! I look up to Bulgar nudging me, whispering urgently. It's here, lad! Stalking, just there in the shadows! He points and groggily, and groggily I try to follow his direction. Shadows are plentiful in the moonlight, but I see none belonging to a beast. Still, the sheep looks worried and alert. Something might be out there. And if it is, and if it is the wolf, the last thing I want is Bagheer having a clean shot in the open at it. At her, if what Lana said is true. Let me go around to the side. Perhaps I can flush it out. Bagheer considers it for a moment, then concedes. Alright, but stay alert. Big beasties are not to be trifled with. We were three days march out of Pretoria when one night a pair of lionesses slipper slipped into our encampment and I pat my rifle. I'll be fine. Of course you will. He pats his own weapon. Because I'll be covering ya. I slip out from behind the rock and make my way deeper into the moor. My steps are cautious and deliberate. I'm trying to be quiet, but in the low light I'm just as worried about misstepping on a rock and breaking an ankle. The dark boulders and scraggly bushes play tricks on my imagination as I approach the spot where Bulgar had pointed. Sorry about that. Something big is rooting around in the brush, alright. I glimpse it. A great mass of swishing fur catches the moonlight. My stomach turns. Could that really be Jesse? Its nose is pressed to the ground, sniffing. Punctuated by great big huffs. And it seems to be getting closer. A grip on the rifle instinctively tightens as I start to inch backward. It's probably gonna be a normal ass wolf. Bloody hell. The animal's ears perk at the sound. Oh, that, no, oh, nope, that's definitely Jesse. The wolf is bigger than I remember it, and just as terrifying. I hesitate, frozen before its amber gaze. It sniffs again. Those glowing eyes study me from head to toe. I then fall upon the rifle and narrow in apparent comprehension. Before I can react, the beast lunges. Uh. Play dead! The great weight of the beast crashes upon me, bowling me backward. It knocks the wind out of me. The stars dance before my eyes as I struggle to regain my bearings. All I see before me are rows and rows of teeth. Could there, be, could there really be mercy behind that ferocious grin? Reason! At least still can be, silently praying to whoever will listen. Drool drips onto my face as the wolf looms over me, a predator triumphant. Oh! The expected bite never comes. Its eyes widen, its wet nose twitches, probing my face, my clothes, and finally, my... My satchel! I'd almost forgotten Jesse's clothes were still with me. The wolf is sniffing the bag earnestly now. The ferociousness is gone. I finally get a close look at those eyes, and beneath the yellow I see... <gasps> no! The wolf jerks and slides off me, as if tugged by an unseen force. My god, it is her. I'm certain of it now. I saw Jessie in her eyes. In one moment my reality is suspended, and the next it comes crashing back down.
There's something warm and wet on my shirt. Blood, and not my own. My stomach falls out from under me. Malcolm, lad, are you alright? No, no, no! What has he done? I throw my own rifle away with disgust, turn to the wolf lying beside me, and touch it gently. Jesse! It's she, shifts under my touch. Her breathing is shallow, but steady. Behind me, I hear Bogel approaching, coming to claim his trophy. I turn around and open my mouth to shout at the damned fool, for the words die in my throat. Step away, Malcolm. Alana! What are you doing here? Step away! She has every right to be furious. All her warnings, everything she has said, and more was coming true. But there is not anger in her eyes, just desperation to save someone she cares about, a desire we share. I step aside. Alana acts quickly, unrolling a large tartan over the wolf. Then she cries out. You madman! You shot him! Him? Look down reflexively. Despite the blood on my shirt, I confirm I am in one piece. Ah, the blood on my shirt. Malcolm, be you well. I saw the beastie pounce and fired as soon as I had a clean. Shot? Alana? Bogar squints in the darkness, not trusting his own eyes. You see now, old fool. Can't you see Malcolm's hurt? I groan and hold my shoulder in mock pain. The blood makes it convincing, even though it is not my own. Alana, lad, I... He's having trouble processing it all. I know a veteran like himself would never have fired unless he was certain his aim was true. But why hasn't he made mention of the tartan-covered mound at our feet? Could he not see it? I take a chance and point down the glen. It's all right, I, I'm only grazed, but your shot scared it off. Go, get the wolf! She can't have gotten far. That shakes him out of it. Are you mad, boy? You need help! I'll take care of Malcolm. Go, find the beast before anyone else gets hurt. I nod in agreement. I'll be fine. Go! Looking guilty and confused, Bulgare shakes his head and starts off in the direction I'd pointed. Alright, be safe, you two. I'll make amends later, my friend. As we wait for Bulgare to pass beyond earshot, my head swirls. Jesse, my shining light, a werewolf. Alana, eerily prescient, and at the moment our only hope. My own role in this awful tragedy. I make a vow. I suppose... Uh, what does that show? Major decisions, okay. Right. The promise helps give me clarity. Only one question matters now, anyway. Will she be all right? Alana pulls off the tartan, revealing the injured wolf again. A fresh wave of guilt washes over me. Yes, if we act fast. Did you bring her dress? I nod. Good. Home is not far. Help me take her there. We will bring Jesse back. Oh dear. The moon is full and bright enough to light the way. Alana leads us faster and faster through withered branches, wet grass, and jagged rock ledges. Holding Jesse's lichen body crushes my arms, my shoulders, my heart. I follow as fast as I can. She's gonna, like, make her into a hybrid, I think. Combine the wolf and the human elements. We finally arrive at a small stone house dug into a mossy hillside. The skeleton of an old monastery stands sentinel above. Odd. I don't remember a landmark like that being around these parts. Heavy fog is rolled in. The atmosphere feels thick and unnatural. Something is nagging. <sighs> oh. Something is nagging at me. I feel as if I don't belong here. Probably not. It's probably a place of fairies. Alana opens the door and waves me in. The whole room is lit by just one candle. But its light is deceptively bright. As my eyes adjust, I expect to see the small, spartan interior of an old turf house. Instead, I feel like I've walked into someone's manor home. The decor isn't an is elect eclectic as it is luxurious. Modern appliances mixed with among dusty medieval furniture. An old painting of a woman whose features bear an uncanny resemblance. A relative, perhaps. 
an apothecary cabinet brimming with jars and bottles, and so many books. So many books. What is this place? I had always assumed my old teacher lived in town. Luxurious though it is, this feels like a hermit's retreat. That's what I call home now. It's not much, but it provides some measure of privacy. Alana starts brushing everything off of a large antique table. Papers and books fall to the floor. She motions to the table. Here, rest her here. Oh, she's a pretty wolf. I lay the body down gently on the surface, but still feel a tremendous weight on my shoulders. Jesse, it's going to be all right. I speak the words, wanting to believe them. This will stem the bleeding. Alana returns from the apothecary cabinet with a jar of salve and begins gently rubbing the wound. You know medicine. She begins to murmur an incantation. Hmm. The pain eases on the wolf's face, but it still lays motionless. <clears throat> I suspect more is at work than just medicine. Just who are you, Alana? She pauses, but does not look up. We stand on the knife's edge between two worlds, Malcolm. Yours and Jesse's. I am her guardian, the one who ensures Jesse can live in your world without fear of men like Bulgare. The uneasiness returns. I ventured well off the map now. There's no turning back. And what exactly is Jesse's world? Are there more werewolves like her? Anna looks up, her expression unreadable, tears welling in her eyes. Tears of sadness? Joy? Madness? No, it's much more than that, Malcolm. It is a realm of dreams, but to us it will forever lie just beyond our reach. The words choke in her throat. Her manner becomes distant. Jessie's lichen form moves on the table. She's starting to come too. I know you must have many questions, but they will have to wait. The dress, do you have it? I nod and pull the red slip from the bag. Alana takes it and she and drapes the silk over Jessie's body. These clothes... <clears throat> These clothes, Malcolm, are the trappings of your kind, and so they bind Jesse to your world. Cast off, she reveals her true nature. But if that which was cast off is don't again, she may return to hiding in plain sight. So, so that's why Alana needed the dress. But why didn't Jesse tell me? If she knew this would happen, why risk disrobing? She didn't know. You see, there was no risk until you came back. I step, step back instinctively. Me? I don't understand. Malcolm, I told you to stay away from the girls, and yet, here we are. Wait, are you saying I caused the change? How? She sighs, like a mother patiently explaining to a child. Your love, Malcolm. It's all right. You are both young. I don't begrudge you your feelings. What's done is done. The wolf is released. All we can do now is let Jesse choose. A future among humans, or a future among wolves? Her expression changes to one of sympathy. Malcolm, know that this future may or may not include you. I don't want to believe Alana, but after all I've seen, I can no longer doubt her. So I brought this upon Jesse. I unleashed the wolf, and then I joined in the hunt for it. The offenses are racking up. Who could blame Jesse if she never wanted to see me again? But the thought of losing her again leaves me feeling empty inside. I understand. Alana nods and begins another quiet incantation. Yep, and this is gonna be the one that changes her into an anthro! And then she joins the furry community, and she can go to cons, and no one will know the diff <laughs> no one will know that she's an actual werewolf. <laughs> Sorry. Looking back to Jesse, I can hardly see traces of the woman I know. I mean, she still has a, she's still a very beautiful looking wolf. Like, one of a kind. But in the candlelight, peaceful and still as she is, the wolf is no longer the, some ferocious beast. Her body curves with a natural beauty. Svelte, fur-covered limbs exude power and grace. <clears throat> Wait. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. 
Han's words bring an aura to the room. I can feel the energy as the candlelight begins to flicker faster. Yep, you don't have to blurt that out. That is a nipple. Against it, I see her profile changing, lengthening, growing more erect. Her features are becoming softer now, too. My god, it's really happening. The dress only loosely covers her transforming body. Yep! <laughs> Gonna have to cover that, too! It does not hide her soft, round breasts, feeling back out as she twists and stretches across the table. Nope. Damn it, alarm chan. This was getting good. Oh, God, I am... Okay, let's get past this part real quick. Because I don't... <laughs> I don't know if YouTube is gonna, like, age or shake this freaking video. I watch as Jessie's fur begins to recede slowly into her pure white skin. No, oh, yeah! Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, there's just gonna be sensor bars everywhere on this video. Oh, God. Her tail follows suit, and every time her legs twist, her most sensual parts are exposed. Oi, 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 oi. With each wiggle, her paws reshape a little more into familiar, dainty feet. Her muzzle shortens, and the large black wolf nose melts back into the petite bow, bow nose I just kissed last night. At last, the figure on the table resembles the woman I remember. It's her. Before me lies Jesse. Uh oh. Something is wrong. Get out! Alana is yelling at me. The transformation. It's stopped. It's beginning to di it's beginning to digress. Jesse's familiar face distorts back into a wolfish vicious visage. Furry emerges, covering everything exposed. Her tail violently sprouts forth. Even I can feel it. Energy is swallowing the room whole. You must get out. You're stopping the transformation. It is more than a request. I feel compelled. My legs move of their own accord, and I beat a hasty retreat. I burst outside, nearly in terror. I'm greeted only by eerie silence. All right, guys, I'm going to stop it right there. Oh, my God, I've got a lot of censoring to do in this video. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.